So can one of you summarize, what are the prerequisites to get into University of Toronto's PA program? You need, you have to be a Canadian citizen, first thing, or I think permanent resident as well. Um, you need to have a minimum of two years of undergrad. So it's the 10 full year, like 20 credits, half year. Um, that's really the minimum, a minimum GPA 2.7. And uh, so it used to be 900 hours for the healthcare experience, but because of COVID, they actually dropped that to 100 for this cycle that just closed. And also I think for next year as well. So that's really good. Like if you don't have healthcare experience, like it's possible to get 100 hours uh, in one year. So that's a good thing. So those are things you really have to have to apply. If you don't have those, you're like your application won't, won't be looked at. It'll be, it'll be rejected. And um, then we have uh, the recommended criteria. So for example, you'll have like anatomy, physiology, and chemistry. Um, they usually uh, suggest having a full, like a full course, like two semesters basically of each of those courses. Um, I think they also suggest that you have like direct patient care versus like indirect, but those are recommendations. So it's not things that you have to have um, to apply, but it's just a plus for you. And I think like sometimes I see like on the Facebook group, people are asking like, oh, like, should I, do I have to take like chemistry? Do I have to take, you know, those recommended courses? And what I feel, I'm not speaking for the program, but what I feel is that this, first of all, can give you a plus because you do have those courses, you know, in your transcript. Um, but it's especially for when you're thinking if you are accepted into PA school, like having that anatomy background and having that physiology background will help you because you will have that base already there. So you'll kind of build on that. Um, because if you have, if you don't have those courses, like you can learn it, like many people like can, I think you're saying like anatomy, you didn't have that and you did great. But it's just, it's a bit easier when you have touched on that before. So that's just, it, it's helpful for your app, but also for your future as a student. How does University of Toronto calculate GPA for PA admissions? But I believe it's a cumulative GPA. So no matter kind of when you did your undergraduate degree, the GPA is considered cumulative from that. And so um, also like I did my master's program and I did actually get a GPA for my master's. Some master's you don't get a GPA from, um, but the GPA for the master's is not considered. It's just kind of considered that you have a, a master's and they would consider that in your application as like a separate kind of part of you as an applicant. Healthcare experience hours are required for U of T. Um, what are examples of healthcare experience hours and do they consider some types of hours more competitive than others? So I got my hours as a medical assistant, um, working as a family practice office. It was also a partial walk-in. I know a lot of students in our, not a lot, but a few other students in our program also got them that way. I think it's a really great position if you're someone who doesn't have a previous um, certification, like, like MC got previous certification to do something a bit more specialized. So if you don't, I think medical assistant is a great option. I also got exposed to a lot of different, um, I got exposed to primary medicine, but I got exposed to special because I was um, coordinating referrals. And so I learned quite a bit of just about how the medical system works, which I think is really important when you're going through an accelerated program. If you've never been introduced to the medical system in Canada, I would suggest doing something where you get exposed to that. Mind you, you can do something that's a little bit more indirect, such as clinical research, uh, and you may still be interacting with patients as well. So there's a very wide spectrum, but I think MC touched on this before that direct patient interaction is think uh, key, like that's gold if you can get it, but sometimes it's not always possible. So um, whatever you have to get is great. And if you're ever confused, I've had a lot of students message me, does this count? Does this count? Message the admissions committee. They're super great at responding really quick and they'll give you um, information regarding that. And then you won't have to worry or, or do it and then find out it doesn't count. So you can always, always contact them. Kind of what you're saying, like about the indirect patient care. Like I know sometimes people message me and they're like, oh, I got like a volunteer position doing this. Do you think that's enough for me to get in? And like, I always say like, it's again, it's not one element in your application. Like, yes, maybe a direct position will have more value per se, but at the same time, what else can you offer? And like, if you, if you did other things in your life, like do talk about that because again, that will raise you up and separate you from everyone else. So it's not only about the job that you hold or volunteer position that you have.